A reading from the first book of the Kings. Jeroboam thought to himself, the king will return to David's house if now this, this people go up to offer sacrifice in the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. The hearts of his people will return to their master, Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me. After taking counsel, the king made two calves of gold and said to his people, You have been, made, been going up to Jerusalem long enough. Here is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt, and he who put one in Bethel and the other in Dan. This led to sin because the people frequently those calves in Bethel and in Dan. He also built temples on the high places and made priests among the people who were not Levites. Jeroboam established a feast in the eighth month on the fifteenth day of the month to duplicate in Bethel the pilgrimage feast of Judah. With sacrifices to the calves he made them and to be stationed in Bethel priests of the high places he had built. Jeroboam did not give up his evil ways after this, but again made priests for the high places from among the common people. Whoever desires it was con consecrated and became a priest of the high places. This was a sin on the part of the house of Jeroboam, of which it was to be cut off and destroyed from the earth. The word of the Lord. Remember us, O Lord, as your favor, your people. Remember us, O Lord, as your favor, your people. We have sinned, <laughs> we and our fathers. We have committed crimes, we have done wrong. Our fathers in Egypt considered not your wonders. Remember us, O Lord, as your favor, your people. They made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. <laughs> they forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. <laughs> Alleluia! Alleluia! Alleluia. 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 One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, 
because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will collapse along the way, and some of them have come a great distance. His disciples answered him, Where can anyone get enough bread to satisfy them here in this deserted place? Still he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They replied, Seven. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to distribute. And they distributed them to the crowd. They also had a few fish. He said the blessing over them and ordered them distributed also. They ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets. There were about 4,000 people. He dismissed the crowd and got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Del Monthu. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. See, when I know I'm supposed to be here on Saturday, I show up. <laughs> so if you ever get another Saturday where it's supposed to be me and I'm not here, it's because I didn't know. <laughs> for whatever reason. The schedules change a lot here. And uh, sometimes they forget to send an update out. Uh, today as I was praying over the Gospel, I couldn't help but think in the uh, four Gospels, we have these double feedings of the multitude. Uh, in all four Gospels, Jesus feeds the 5,000. And in Mark and Matthew, he feeds an additional 4,000, which is what we're focused on today. The Markin account, however, I think is interesting. From the point of view, its implication is he's ministering to the wrong people. All indications are he is still in the region of the Decapolis, where he healed the Syrophoenician woman's daughter, and then healed the man who could not hear or speak. And both of them were Gentiles. And the implication is he's still in Gentile territory. And he has been ministering, not just for a few minutes. He's been ministering to this vast crowd we learn immediately for three days. For three days, Jesus has been messing with the wrong people. And that indicates that God's love is boundless. <laughs> and if you ever wonder, does God love me? Think of Jesus taking all that time with the wrong people. Three full days. And then he sensed their hunger physically, and his heart was moved with compassion. And he decides to feed them. And when he <coughs> asked his disciples what they might do, their response is immediate. Where would anyone find enough food in this wilderness? And Jesus simply asked, how many loaves do you have? And we're told seven. And it seems so small, but they did choose to give it. And in turn, they gave their few fish. And Jesus used it to feed that large multitude. And that says, not only does Jesus love everyone, <coughs> But everyone has, within him or herself, the potential to do some things. <coughs> Too often, we excuse ourselves because we don't think we have enough. So we'll let someone else do it. I think the important thing here is to realize 
All of us have some things. And our, it's our willingness to take that which we have, large or small, and give it. As I thought about that, I was thinking how just last week we had that book drive with the children in Mecca. And I thought, maybe there's someone here who decided for the first time to give a book. Very simple. Decided for the first time, I'll give a book. And I thought, well, when we have the drive next year, maybe that same person will say, <laughs> I gave one book. I can give four this year. Didn't hurt me to get one. Maybe I can give four. And I think that's how we learn to give. You know, we look at what is there for us to respond to and give whatever we have, big or small. And it's in the giving that we learn that we can always give more. I find this reading challenging. It challenges me to lay claim to God's love for me and you. And understanding we are beloved of God to realize we all have things to give from big to small. The question is, will we?